Hey folks, it's Commander Red Falcon, and welcome to the stream. Uh, you'll notice that I'm in an SRV right now. Um, I'm still near Colonia. I'm just picking up some minerals. I had planned to do all this uh, off stream, and I did. I did actually get a lot done, but I figured it'd be kind of neat to show you a little bit of this process. So, I'm on a planet right now, um, searching for minerals that I can use to later synthesize um, AFMU um, ammunition, for lack of a better term, uh, so I can repair my ship, and also um, FSD boost injections. So... We're just gonna. Oh, oh, here we go. Now I'm I'm hunting down a. Um, what I'm hoping is an outcropping. So I've watched a video multiple times on how to interpret the radar scanner on this thing, and uh, I, I, I kind of understand it, but it's still like really confusing. Uh, but basically, right above the uh, the map, you'll see a radar that's swishing from left to right. Um, basically, the um, the readings on there are different types of uh, mineral nodes, and they all have different signatures, and they have a different noise uh, that plays. But um, I have not been able to. Well, I need more practice. Um, determining exactly what they mean. So, but good news is I was able to get enough stuff off camera to uh, at least make it the Sagittarius A. And granted, this stuff is mostly just for emergencies uh, in case I get like stuck at a system and I can't jump out. Um, I can use the FSD booster to increase my range and I'm gonna need that to get to a point beyond um, Beagle Point okay let's see there's something over here I don't know if you can hear it but it almost sounds like a um, Geiger counter um, I believe that's the noise for the more common types of mineral nodes Ah, oh, there's one. Alright. So, unfortunately, your interaction with things in an SRV is um, limited to shooting things and scanning things. So we shoot it. Okay. Vanadium, that's something I needed. Let's see, cargo scoop open, and we're just gonna drive over it. We got some nickel. Um, you also use this stuff to repair SRVs and refuel them, uh, replenish the ammunition. Okay. Oh, good, an outcrop. Perfect. Uh, outcrops typically have the more rare materials. So. Blast that. And we're... Uh, oh, good, good. Germanium. I need that. Um, I believe... Uh, it doesn't show it here, but the gravity here is like 0.2 G. Good, I need that stuff to... We got some iron. And you'll see here um, my inventory of how many I have. Um, so this is the part that's kind of confusing. So you can't actually buy these minerals. Um, there is 
um, you can find NPCs that can like trade minerals for minerals, but you can't actually buy these, and they're pretty much locked to anyone who has a uh, has the uh, um, Horizons expansion. All right, so I'm gonna track my cargo scoop. We're calling my ship. So now I just wait for my ship to show up. Oh, there it is. There's the Arctic Turn. There we go. Sometimes the AI has trouble docking with, uh, well not docking, but landing on uh, rocky surfaces. But thankfully this part of the planet's pretty uh, flat, relatively speaking. All right, there's my ship. Now I am gonna stop at Colonia to repair a few things. Um, I need to repair my SRV. Um, I think the ship might have taken some damage because I uh, I landed on a uh, high G planet and took a pretty pretty rough tumble. But but yeah, this is uh this is what my ship looks like when it's landed on a planet. I should be good. Okay, cool. We can board the ship now. And I'm going to board ship. All right. All right. Feels good to be back in the cockpit. Alright, so first things first. Let's go to... Let's lock in Colonia. Yeah, you see, I'm not far from Colonia at all. But we're uh, about 22,000 light years from Earth. I don't know. <laughs> Taking off from a planet's always fun. All right. Landing gear retracted. All right, we've cleared 2K. Should be able to engage my jump engines pretty quick. Huh? There we go. Now, this is part I don't understand. You'd think that I'd be mass locked being this close to a planet, but I can actually engage my engines right here. So, cool science, I guess. I'll go ahead and turn a few of these modules off. I don't need that hangar. Okay. This is going to be a, um, a quick... I don't know why I'm scanning this system. I've been here before. Alright. Okay. Let's see here. I just want to see stations. How many stations do we have? Colonial Orbiter, Orbital, Dove Enigma, Jock Station. You know what? I got a better idea. Old Beaver's Hangout. Okay, let's go there. Let's dock with a... Uh, um, fleet carrier. I haven't actually docked at a fleet carrier yet. Or have I? I don't remember. 
but it's closer than these other stations, and I just need repairs. I'm not selling any data. So it'd be kind of neat to see what that looks like. Let's see here. Commander Smelster of the Endless Horizon Squadron. No planned departure, all docking access. Ooh, no one with notorious um, reputations allowed the dock there. That's interesting. Okay, what else? Yep. Plus, it'll help this pile, uh, this commander out a little bit because I'll. Uh, He'll make a a percentage off the uh, docking fee, not docking fees, but like the repair co uh, repair fees and everything. So, and I'm really only picking this because it was the closest. So I don't know this player. Don't even. And this player could be on console, PC. Um. The uh, fleet carriers persist in all instances. Which is really interesting. Uh, fleet carriers are also indestructible. So, I mean, I guess if you're going to lay down like 5 billion credits for something, you don't want it to explode. That looks like a different style of fleet carrier than what we saw before. All right. Yeah. Permission granted. We look forward to welcoming you to our carrier. Docking pad nine must be on the other side of the ship. Well, let's just get a better view, shall we? It's certainly impressive looking. Oh, that looks like pad nine right there. Of course, I'm on the wrong side of the ship. Come around for my approach. I don't know what kind of maneuver that was. Okay. Landing gear deployed. Landing gear deployed. Ooh, almost perfect. All right. Let's go into the hangar. All right, refuel, repair. Hmm. Oh, this one's got a shipyard. Neat. <laughs> I have got no ships here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is cool. So, <laughs> I didn't know fleet carriers could do this. So, apparently, if I really wanted to, I could transfer my ships um, from... Actually, I don't know. You might be able to do this with any shipyard. But apparently, I could transfer my ships back in Seoul and bring them here. That's really useful. Huh. I mean, shit. Like, that's like commodities market. Let's see what we got here. What is it buying? Tritium. Yeah, that makes sense. Or, I'm sorry, tritanium and low temperature diamonds. Um, this is the fuel 
that the um, carriers need to jump. Yeah, I don't have anything for them to... Oops. Clicked at the wrong time. Titanium port. Wow, okay. It's almost at like... I could donate some if I wanted to. Crew lounge. See if there's any crew members. Take one crew member with you on board. Ship not compatible. I got multi-crew. Carrier overview. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, there's the carrier in all its glory. Fuel state. Uh, so basically, there are different modules you can purchase. And, uh, yeah, you see here down the last one, service tariff, 5%. So 5% of all the money I pay for services the player gets. Um, yep, and these things can jump 500 light years. So, that's interesting. Ooh, what's this? Oh, that's just the codex entry for fleet carriers. Hey, you can read all about it later. If you're really interested in that kind of stuff. Alright. Um, I think I'm done with this. Okay. Advanced maintenance. A pair. A tear. Oh, okay. So, anything that's got the, um, the little CR tab... That means there's a tariff applied. Okay. Ooh. This is a cool interface. All right, let's fix the ship integrity. Let's fix the paint. Well, that's really cool. I hope they, uh... I hope they apply this interface to the rest of the stations. This looks really cool. All right, we're good on ammunition. Structural repairs. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, and I think fuel's right here. Yeah. Cool. I like this interface. It's it's nice. And then there's my remote workshop with my two pins things. Cool. Uh, yeah, this is basically what the inside of the hangar looks like. It's kind of... Kind of cool. All right. So I'm going to grab our next waypoint. And I will be right back. So our first waypoint. There we go. All right, so just to give you an idea of where we're headed, Sagittarius A. Wow, you can see it's actually like the game's actually chugging a little bit. Uh, Sagittarius A is the center of our galaxy. And we are like right over here. Um, the actual distance from where we are isn't all that bad. It's uh, 11.3 thousand light years. Uh, we're actually going to be making a detour. So, let's see. So our first, like, kind of leg of the journey, well, not really leg, but mini leg, waypoint. So there's this system called uh, the Great Escape. And this is apparently the lowest point in the uh, galactic plane that you can visit. Unfortunately, I don't have the ship, the kind of ship that can make that jump. 
So what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be going down the galactic plane and um, we're going to get as close to that as we can without, you know, within reason. And then we're going to go back up to, where is it? Ascent, which is above the galactic plane. And I think we can actually get there. But yeah, you can see just like how high we are above everything. And then there's one more. This guy right here. Let's see. P H O. P O. Oh well, that system right there. P H O A O S C S A A dash A. Um, that's another system that's close to the galactic plane. Um, and then we're actually going to go out of our way just a little bit to um, the Great Annihilator, which is right here. It's in the same galactic neighborhood as uh, Sagittarius A. And then finally, we're going to go to Sagittarius A. So, that's our... Um, that's our flight plan for the second leg of our journey. So, we're taking a journey that's normally about 11,000 light years, and we're kind of... we're doubling it. It's going to be closer to, like, 22. Right. So this is our first official jump of leg two. Sagittarius A. Let's do one last systems check before we head out. Okay, that hasn't updated because I repaired everything. That shouldn't be reading like that. And the way I can tell... Oops. Yeah, that's fine. I've got... Okay, cool. Yeah. Basically, you, like, activate something and then the uh, stuff updates. I think it's a bug. Okay, so we got that. Oh, let me show you synth synthesis right here. Um, we have the resources needed. Um, wow, I can actually make... 19 of the 25%, the basic FSD injector, so that's 25% uh, distance. The standard one is plus 50%. Again, I can make 15 of those, and then I can make 12 of the premium. Now, some of them share components, so it's not a true, like, 12, but um, I feel pretty good about that. And if we go down here, um, AFM refill, that's uh, for the AFMU. That repairs my ship. I can make like four of these like premium repairs. So, um, and I even have some stuff to uh, fix my life support, resupply my life support if needed. Um, hopefully, it doesn't come to that. All right, so we are good to go. First official jump. We're leaving with uh, a bunch of minerals in the tank. We can uh, make some stuff as we go. I'm really interested, and one of the reasons I wanted to do this, even though I can't get to some of these waypoints, is I just wanted to see like what it looks like under the galactic pa uh, plane and above the galactic plane, so. Plus, that makes um, this journey about the same. Ooh, Waterworld. 
uh, makes it about the same distance as uh, our previous leg. So, that's a thing. Metal rich. Okay. I want that water world. Concentrated signal source. Wait, what? Notable stellar phenomena. Ooh. That looks interesting. I, you know, I kind of want to check that out. Another high metal content world. Alright, what we got here? Okay. So you're not around the orbital plane. Let's see if we can find this planet. Right, where the hell is that planet? Okay, now I feel like a big dummy. Where is it? Hmm. Let's see if I can cheat a little bit. It's not what I wanted. Point my nose at it. There it is. All right. see if any of these planets are worth scanning. We have... Metal Rich? Nope. Well, High Metal, candidate for uh, terraforming. And a Water World that's um, candidate for terraforming. That's even better. Alright, let's make sure that these guys are close. Yeah, three and four. Okay, cool. Actually, let's hit that noticeable, notable stellar phenomenon real quick. I've never seen one of these before, so I'm curious. Might be a good photo op, too. Ah, oh, now that I think about it, I should have taken some pictures of Colonia. Eh, oh well. Not like it's going anywhere. Yeah, I can't wait to see what the skybox looks like as we um, descend below the uh, orbital plane, or the galactic plane. Oh 
almost there. the hell is that? It's a... Uh, something. Alright, any contacts? No? the hell are these? Whoa, these things are weird. These like ice crystals or something? I wonder if I scan any of these. There's nothing really to lock on to. Well, this is definitely uh, worth a picture or two. Biological and geological discovery made. Huh. Lagrange cloud. Okay. Neat. Let's see if I can grab a couple pictures here. Okay, I think that's enough. Hopefully I don't crash into anything. Well, this is pretty cool. I guess those are crystal formations. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. What's my codex say? These things are. Grunge clouds. A swirling blue cloud of gas fixed in place at a Lagrange point. <laughs> Neat. Okay. Well, that's some cool stuff to keep out. Uh, keep an eye out for then. All right. Oh wow, look at these things, they're huge! Alright, that was fun. Alright, let's see here. Okay, I 
think I've already got this guy locked in. Yeah, he's already locked in. Good. Get into Super Cruise. Okay, and we want Planet 3 and 4. Well, that's a pretty cool unexpected discovery. To make a note of this place. Wow, the stars are so dense. Looks like there's a nebula right there, and a red nebula right there. system might be worth like a million credits I think or pretty close to it good money Was it 0.4 light seconds is the optimum range? Okay, that's par seven. lands. Master Nicholas. Hmm. A little overlap. Yeah, that one overshot that one a little bit. That's fine. I can put you right here, man. Now 7,000 light seconds. I'm going to check something real quick.
All right, I'm back. Just had to check the temperature real quick. Um, wanted to make sure I didn't have any issues with my air conditioning, but for some reason my office, it's always about, because right now, uh, so the house thermostat's set to 72, and it's 72 like pretty much the rest of the house. But for some reason in my office, and maybe it's the heat coming off my processor and my uh, graphics card, but when I do VR, um, the temperature climbs, uh, right now it's 79 in here. And it was, uh, it was noticeable enough that I wanted to make sure there wasn't something wrong with my air conditioning. Uh, and obviously this is 79 Fahrenheit for the international folks. But I think you kind of piece that together. Yeah, 79 Celsius. Whew. Okay, I don't... That would be very uncomfortable. Wow. 42 minutes into the stream and we haven't really gone very far. <laughs> uh, well. And I kind of wrestled with the idea of, do I go ahead and start the second leg or do I, um, you know, kind of let you see, uh, you know, the departure from that destination? Uh, well... I knew I wanted to get pick up some minerals, so I decided to do that first. And of course, you know, life happens, and I just didn't have time to really finish that. So the decision was kind of made for me, so, which is fine. I just can't get over the star density. It's insane. Seven, same as our friend earlier. Okay, we want to do right there. And then we'll do one right here. And one right here. Alright, we'll see where that one lands. Okay, no overlap, so that's good. Let's see where this probe lands. Oh, looks like I hit too close. Yeah, we got a lot of overlap. Okay, let's hope this is 7% of the planet's surface right here. that efficiency bonus. All right, let's get out of here. So that seems like a bit of a waste to um, use a super, to supercharge my FSD only to get like an extra three light years out because the distance here is like 66. I guess the algorithm that I used. So, there's a website for plotting neutron star routes. 
and it has an efficiency slider, and I set the efficiency to about like 90. Uh. Ooh, an ammonia world. Honestly, if I can just get the ammonia world, I think I'd be okay with that. scan that system. Eh. It's just an ammonia world. I'm not as worried. Alright, get to the next destination. Missing something? Okay. What do you mean route not available? There we go. Now I got it. Sometimes the uh, star map acts up a little bit. But you can kind of see how we're starting to drop below the galactic plane. The plane's above us, and as we go down, the stars are still dense, but there's fewer of them. Well, the density is a little lower. Thirty bodies. Rocky bodies. Yeah, nothing here. There's going to be a lot of going back and forth because we're pretty much on the highway. Be right back. By the way, you can see where we came from. Now we're just getting lower and lower. Looks like after this jump, I'll find a nice fuel star to Three, two, 
visit. I feel like we're making a little progress now. What do we got? Icy bodies. Wow, you can tell the star density is getting lower and lower. Oh, wait a minute. I did mention I was going to pick up, get a fuel star. Let's see right, what's right next to it. Class M? Yeah, let's get that Class M. Yep. Be a fine girl, kiss me. So that, uh, that low point that I can't get to, it actually has a very interesting story surrounding it. Um, that system's been nicknamed the Great Escape. And it took a commander in a specially engineered anaconda with the maximum jump range that you could possibly make in the game. And a, um, a second player to kind of act as a tanker. So here's the problem with that destination. Um, assuming that you can jump to that point in space, um, and again, your fuel limits how far you can jump, as in like the additional weight um, can prevent you from jumping. So the idea is you get, to, you get there, okay. Then you have a problem of the nearest neutron stars like, like 300,000 light, um, light seconds away and then you have to be able to boost back from there rocky bodies ooh water world hello so in order to get back I, oh and there's no fuel star in that system so basically you have to jump while you have an empty tank almost And uh, there's actually this really cool technique that was developed um, where if you have a partner with you, um, right as your ship's about to jump, um, the fuel's already been emptied into your FSD, and they can shoot a fuel limpet at you that will give you like uh, one ton of fuel. So essentially you're um, jumping with the extra fuel that um, it's basically like a, a way of like cheating the system in a way. Um, I don't know if I explained that very well. Um, but basically you get like an extra ton of fuel right before you jump that you normally wouldn't have. And you can use that to um, successfully complete the journey to the neutron star and jump out. Because uh, otherwise... You'd have to fly with a nearly empty tank, and you wouldn't, um, once you landed in the system, you wouldn't have enough fuel to get back. So obviously, I can't attempt that, because I don't even have an anaconda. Um, 
or the necessary stuff, but we can get pretty close to it. And that's kind of all I really want to do. It's kind of like going to Mount Everest, but like not going up, like basically going to like the, the base of uh, Mount Everest and looking up and saying, yep, there it is. Not nearly as exciting, but I'm not equipped to do that. And uh, I believe there have only been four commanders who have success, four different commanders that have successfully completed that journey. Um, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> But these other systems, uh, we should be able to get to. Um, the next one, uh, Ascent. I think you only need to have a maximum boosted jump range of 220 light years, which I have. I can get it to like 250 something. So that should be fine. Um, oh crap, I don't think anyone's discovered these yet. About that. It's my system. Cool. All right. Plus, um, when you go above or below the um, the uh, galactic plane, you uh. Okay, that's fine. I'll just go ahead and map it. Um, it. There are um. Fewer uh, discovered systems, because it's kind of off the beaten path. So that's another reason why I wanted to kind of go the long way to Sagittarius A, so I could get some uh, some credits in more ways than one. Oh, it's my first loop of shame of the stream. Uh. Actually, that kind of worked out. Wow, this is a this is a par eight. Wow, I've never done a par eight before. This is a pretty big planet. All right, you know I have a feeling this one's going to be a little more. Um, yeah, this approach. Let's see how big is that coverage. Okay. A little overlap, but not that much. Got that. And let's just shoot you right here. This should get me up to 90k. Ah, damn it. Damn it. That's not what I wanted to do at all. Okay, that's five, six, seven. I'll still come in under par. Get the efficiency bonus. Ooh, that was painful. <laughs> okay. All right. And it's right next door. Point eighty eight light years. Hooray. Well, I mean, I hit right next to it. Well, cool. If I can get first discovery on this, that'll be nice. Of 
course, in the back of my mind, every time I do a stream like this, I'm always thinking, I wonder if there's someone, like, right behind me getting credit for all the systems I discovered before I get to turn in my data. Well, I don't think I have enough people watching for that, so... Okay, good. Oh, wow, you can actually see it. The uh, system, the Great Escapes, right down there. Odin's Hold? Oh, hey, we're entering a new region. Awesome. Odin's Hold. Something I can pronounce. <laughs> Good. Good, 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 good. Now we're entering Odin's Hold. One new discovery made, M-Type Star. Oh, cool. High metal content world. Asteroid clusters. Since I'm in a new region, I should probably go ahead and just scan some of these. Bet there's a bunch of asteroids here. Let's just go ahead and get these out of the way. Because as I mentioned before, new region means new... Oh, what's that? Non-terraformable. New region means new discoveries, so. All right. But just to give you an idea, what's that codex at? Discoveries. All right, Odin's Hold is right there, and this is where we were before. And enter uh, Odin's Hold borders the um, Galactic Center. I'm not sure if we're going to be in this region the whole time. I mean, obviously, we're going to go to the Galactic Core at some point, but um, I'm not sure if we're going to go to the one next to it or not. But anyway, just give you an idea of where we are in the galaxy. All right, let's see. Let's get some. Let's boost our ship.
know. Hmm. Looks like it'd be a good candidate for terraforming. I mean, look at it. Nope. Nope. All right. Next waypoint. You'll notice. Look right up there. That's that's the galactic plane. You can actually see it now that we're out of it. It's pretty wild, actually, <laughs> being uh, under it like this. This is really cool. Might as well scan. One of these gas giants here. Oh, what am I missing here? Ah. Terraformable. Whoa, okay, a lot of stuff here. Wait, this can't be right. It's saying no one's found these planets before. Huh. I might get first discovery credit for these planets. Oh wow, look at that one. It's got a thin ring. Curious now. All right. Okay. I'm sure somebody's been here before me. Yep. Heath Houston. Ah, but apparently Heath Houston was one of the early. Um, explorers and um, hadn't quite um, didn't have the uh, they were pre uh, exploration patch which is just going to call that period in history actually I don't know if I've explained to this audience on the stream about that I, I think I did on my um, uh, one of my other journeys okay so Early in the game's life, and, and I think this, it was changed maybe about two, three years ago, maybe four years. Um, when you, um, so there was this module you bought for your ship called a, um, um, I forgot what it was. It was some type of scanner. Actually, hold on. 
Discovery Scanner. Um, so all ships have Discovery Scanners now, but at one point, early in the game's history, uh, the uh, Discovery Scanner was actually a separate module you had to buy for your ship. Let me grab that waypoint. Okay, so the Discovery Scanner was a separate module you had to buy. And there were like three grades of Discovery Scanners. And basically, um, like the first version, um, when you honked a system, uh, it had a certain range, like so many light seconds. And then there was the medium tier one, which the uh, scanning distance was a lot greater. And then finally there was like the top tier one where it was like it would scan the entire system regardless of uh, distance. So in the early days, and I say early days, I think they made this change maybe like 2018. Um, it was before, um, it was bef it was after it was before I first played the game, but after I uh, started playing again, so. Anyway, so it would be completely possible for you to jump into a system, scan it, and only get like the star, and not know that there were other um, planets in the system. Which is what happened back there. So, um, you can always tell the pre-patch explorers because they may have just discovered, like, the star system, but none of the other star, um, I mean, they discovered, they discovered the star and maybe a couple of the close planets, but they didn't discover the entire, um, system. So, that's basically what that is, um. Alright, anything in here worth looking at? Oops. Nah, these are all metal content. Yep. Alright, good to go. Alright, looks like I'm due for another fuel stop. See where the closest fuel star is to this guy. All right. Wow, there's a lot of neutron stars over here. Okay, it'll be a fine girl. Kiss me. There's also this guy here. Yeah, I think that one's closer to our. Actually, you know what? Nah. I'm gonna go with the first one. It's like when you, uh, it's like standardized testing in public school. You, um, you always go with your gut on the first answer. First answer you choose, usually the right one. So we'll see. But wow, yeah, you can tell that the galactic plane's a lot more, um, pronounced now that we're getting further from it. This is wild. Three, two, 
Oh good, a K-class star. I hadn't found one of these in this region yet. Here we go. Let's get all fueled up. star a bit. Icy bodies. High metal content. Yeah, I think we're good here. There we go. I like they have to put the descriptor non-terraformable ice world. It's like, guys, I, I don't think you can terraform an ice world. I mean, maybe if you had a lot of space heaters, but I don't think so. You'd have to have a serious runaway greenhouse effect. And even then, I, I don't know. anything good in this system I mean there's this planet that looks promising but let's see you're not yet nope okay no. oh check something H had anyone found this and the best way to tell is scan uh, look at the first planet oh shit <laughs> I don't think think wow no one's found okay all right no one's found the system yet i made the good call <laughs> see trust your gut though there's also an equal chance that the other system um was um hadn't been scanned but oh well you know what Let's test that theory. Now I'm curious. Because I was about to say we'll never know, and I'm like, no, no, we, 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 we can know. We can know. Well, I'm just enamored by this view. It's so... I don't know. There's something about being under our, the Milky Way galaxy that just kind of... I don't know. It's... It's epic. It's awesome in the original word of the word awesome. Plus, I'm also listening to a uh, an epic song about Mother Earth, so. I guess nobody found this system either. Cool. Well, all right. I I guess I can have my cake and eat it too in this particular instance. Cool. All right. We're going to backtrack just a little bit. This is so wild. It's weird because it's just like stars and nebulas, and then it's just like nothing. And a few stars.
20 bodies, huh? Alright. Well, I haven't found every type of gas giant in this region yet, so I'm mostly doing this for the codex entries. Of course, that means it's going to take a little longer, but I'm okay with that. Discovered by Rome's. I guess that's how you say his name. Ramirez? Maybe? I don't know. Asteroid cluster. Come on, it's got to be something here. Looks have been deceiving before. It might have a nitrogen atmosphere. Terraformable. Huh. Spoiler. get some of these asteroids out of my scanner. I don't know. Some of these planets might be good candidates. There's a lot here. Non terraformable something. Cool. All right. All right. Well, let's get our boost first, and then we'll proceed. to those terraformable planets. So I have a feeling none of them are orbiting this neutron star. All right, supercharged. Now. Actually, hold on, I wanna take a quick picture. I know, there's no such thing as a quick picture when I'm involved. All right, let's see here. Let's Turn off the orbital line, slow down a little bit. Turn off the HUD. Yet. Oh yeah, that's a cool shot.
Okay. Let's turn those orbital lines back on. All right. Let's see how the, I'll have to see how those pictures turned out. If they're good, I'll add them to the album. Oh, and for those that want to see the album, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's a link to it in the description. And if you're watching this on Twitch, if you can figure out the get to the about page, there's actually a image link to it. Oh, okay. All right. So this is planet five. Okay, six is good, but not its moon. Okay. Okay, so five and six, but I want to check these other planets. Okay, icy body. so wild like that's that's the bottom of the galaxy oh let me make sure these that's five Right. I'm kind of confused now. B five. What the hell is six? Okay, there's six. Where the hell is five? Oh. Well, I should hit six first. Oh, okay, they're kind of in a straight line, I think. Let's see, did anyone scan these planets yet? I'm gonna guess no. Nope, first discovered. No, it doesn't have a first mapped credit yet, good. Good. We're going to make some good money off this little trip. I like it. Okay, I'm glad I figured that out, because there's six, and then somehow five is... Wait a minute. Yeah, there's five. There's six. Okay, yeah, we're good. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, that, that makes a little more sense now. Different star system, yeah, a different star, okay. Because I was just trying to think, I'm like, wait a minute, why is six closer to me than five? But, okay, no, it all makes sense. Okay. 
Okay, looks like we're under the influence of the second star now. We're starting to slow down. Oh. I mean, I shouldn't complain about these long uh, super cruise journeys because, I mean, I flew to Hutton Orbital. It's the only time I've seen... Uh, uh, distance within a star system measured in light years. It was a pretty low number, though. It was like 0 0.02 or 0 0.2 light years, I think. Oh. oh, hello, kitty. There's a kitty right in front of me begging for food, even though I fed him. That's the only thing I... Like, I would entertain the idea... That's the only moment where I wish I had a webcam so you could see the cat. But other than that. Mm -hmm. Hello, kitty. Yes, you could be the star of the show. If you listen, you might hear him purr. Alright, I gotta slow down, kitty. Nope. Kitty, stop that. Stop that, Frankie. <laughs> stop licking. He's licking my thumb. Yes, I know. All right, we're getting there. Closer. Just occurred to me I'm not going to be able to turn this data in until I hit Sagittarius A. Unless I can find, unless somebody left a um, a carrier, Six. Put you right there. Right there. And right here. And let's see. Let's try to get you about right here. Let's see where those land. I'm sorry. Rome 9. Okay. A uh, little bit of a gap. A little bit of a gap. Ooh, I think I hit that. Ah, perfect. <laughs> Getting better at this. All right, so this was six, so we need five. Which is uh, almost on the other side of the system. Well, the orbital. Wow, I still need to put in my next jump point. That is beautiful, though. Look at that. Oh yeah, oh. 
on the other side of the star. Good thing I checked first. That would have saved me a trip. Because I would have had to go to five and then, like, go back to hit six. So let's save us a little time. Oh no, you'll hit that planet in seven seconds. Maybe. Maybe not. Alright. Okay. Smaller planet, I guess. Oh no, six probes. Okay, let's see what happens. We might be able to get it in three. Let's see. I doubt it. It's probably going to be like 5% left or something. Something stupid like that. Uh... Well, damn. Okay. Huh. Got it in three. All right. Let's get our next waypoint. Wow. Ooh, there's not much out here. Oh, wow. We're really going into the black. Look at that. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Makes me a little nervous. We're good on fuel, so I'm not worried about that. Waypoint. Wow. It makes me nervous when it takes it that long to plot a course. Wow. And you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see it on the stream, but there's a white line that shows you our, where we've been. Ooh. Guys, there, there aren't any stars out here. <laughs> Ugh. We are really going into the black now. And I don't mean just like deep space. I mean like the black black. 
This is a preview of what the Abyss is going to look like. Um, Abyss, the Abyss is the region of space that uh, Beagle points in. Apparently, uh, it's at the edge of our galaxy, 65,000 light years from Earth, and uh, yeah. Whew. Scary stuff. Well, now there's only one star here. There we go. Let's try this maneuver again. Okay, let's see. Can I make it? All right, let's see. What do we got here? Man, I'm actually a little scared, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I'm going to run out of fuel. I'm going to be stuck here. Like, I'm fine for now, but... Damn. So what are you? Where the hell are you taking me? A neutron star... Okay, well, the good news is there are some other stars around here that I can fuel from, it looks like. So, I'm a little less worried about that. Oh, be fine girl. So, I can fuel off of you. Okay, kiss me. Yeah, okay. I can fuel off of you. I can fuel off of you. DC? White Dwarf? What the hell is a DC class? Okay. Okay. Okay, I feel better now. that There's actually some stars out here that I can fuel from, so... Not... All that worried. Okay, good. Because um, basically, once I get here, I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, frame shift supercharged. Ooh. I'm definitely gonna fuel. Um, I'm definitely gonna grab fuel from one of those nearby stars. I don't wanna be. I, I'm gonna be extra cautious. Oh, hello. 
All right. Icy bodies, high metal content. Well, let's at least grab these stars. Okay, I gotta let the dog out. Okay, I am back. Oh, wow. Okay, so it either looks like there was a pre-patch explorer that came through here, or uh, whoever came through here just didn't bother scanning these planets, which is fine. There's some... Okay, there've gotta be... Where are those gas giants at? There we go. Okay, so I don't want to jump just yet. I think what I'm going to do instead... Well, let's see if any of these... I don't think any of these... Yeah, they're all rocky bodies. This one looks interesting. Okay. I'll come back to this star in a little bit. Yeah, I have a feeling there aren't a lot of a lot of uh, there aren't a lot of people that come in this part of the galaxy. Frame 
I'll jump to this system, scoop, get some scans, and I might jump to another nearby system, we'll see, and then come back here, just to kind of give you guys an idea. Let's get my name on a few things, you know. Kill two birds with one stone. Good. 21 bodies here, huh? Some of that good, good fuel. Right. Alright, let's take a look at what this system has to offer. Um, I always like to back away from a star until I hit like 1C. Discovery. Good. Need more of those. Something here. No. Here we go. Got a couple gas giants right near each other, cosmically speaking, as always. Let's see here. Ooh, here we go. Standard gas giant. Okay, cool. Always good to check some of those discoveries off. My codex. Rocky body. Alright, cool. I doubt any of these planets are good candidates, but we'll see. Wow, yeah, no one's discovered the star yet. So, I get to be the first. Hooray. All right. It's assuming I, someone else doesn't come behind me and scan these. But honestly, there's so much galaxy to scan, you know? It's like, come on. All right. Okay, yeah, nothing. Nothing. Actually, hold on a minute. Some geological things going on. I want to make sure there aren't any, like, I don't know, like alien ruins or something. Because, you know, there might be, like, a ancient... Uh, 48 geological features. 46 geological features. 
This might be interesting. Water magma. Hmm. 47. 42 geological features. 46. 47. None. Hmm. Forty-eight geological features, huh? Hmm. I almost want to check that out. Actually, what's the... Hmm. Mail must be here. Let me check the... What's the gravity on this planet? Uh... Oh yeah, 0.6 G. We're good. Don't want to make sure. You know, I want to make sure it's not something stupid. All right, hey, let's go see what these geological features look like. We're about to land on a planet that uh, no other explorers have landed on. So what I thought was the Skull Nebula might actually be like another galaxy or something weird. I have a feeling these geological features are just going to be geysers, but still. That's just so eerie. Galaxy, <laughs> and then like just nothing. Whew. There's your standard gas giant to our port side. Reduce that speed a little bit. First things first, let's do a scan of the planet. See what we got. I have a feeling it's gonna be like a part two. Oh yeah, it's a part two. I can get this in one. Woo! Just by the way, just look at that. That is wild. Really? Okay. All right, well. Let's get two in there, then. I, I'll get the efficiency bonus for what it's worth. Uh, wow, this is just nuts. Okay. Let's see. Geological signal. Indicate locations of note on the surface of a planetary body. They can be interesting to a variety of pilots and sometimes offer resources, credits, or discoveries. Yeah. 
Well, let's uh, let's lock in on one of those. Locked in, and now we just need to so I kind of want to head for this blue area right here. There we go. Geological signal seven. That ought to be good enough for what I need. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Surface of this planet is wild looking. Lots of deep canyons. Actually, this would be a really good photo op too. Oh yeah, I definitely want to get a shot from the planet's surface, looking at the... Yeah. Alright, we're in a glide approach now. Oh no, don't abort the glide. Damn it. Oh boy. I shouldn't have done that. I just should have re rode the glide out. Still getting used to this, like, planetary approach system. Let's see if I can... Hoping I can get up a little bit, gain some altitude. choice in the matter, I just gotta ride it out. I really hate it when I uh, screw up the orbital glide and I have to like waste three minutes approaching the ship at sub, well, sub, sub light speed. Slower than light speed it feels like. Okay, I can start to make out a few features. Ooh, ooh, 
Ooh, there's something interesting down there. Look like crystal formations, maybe? Okay, I'm about to... Oh, look like geysers. Eh, wah. Boring geysers. Boring old geysers. Oh, well. Deploy our landing gear. Hopefully we can find a, a good spot to settle set our ship down. Look like geysers and a bunch of rocks. I mean they're like blue guy a purple geysers, that's pretty cool. I don't think we've ever seen a geyser like that before. This, uh... Let's get a little closer here. Okay, I'm bringing her down. Hopefully I'm not, like, landing on anything. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Alignment good. Bring her down nice and gently. All right. We are, we've made landing, we've made contact. All right. Actually, while I'm here, I can go ahead and enact some repairs on the frame shift drive. I don't think I've ever shown this on stream, um, but we're uh, we're repairing the frame shift drive because every time you uh, charge it with a neutron from a neutron star, it uh, takes damage. So, ninety-seven percent, ninety-eight percent, ninety-nine. Good. Go ahead and... Damn it. Whatever. Take you... Uh, we'll go ahead and... Put you back online. Alright. Am I? There we go. I got scared for a second. Couldn't find my SRVs. Alright. Right. Wow. There's definitely something interesting going on here. Crystalline cluster. All right. Scan it first. Like I said, you can either shoot something or scan something. Hmm, crystalline cluster, huh? Come on. Come on. Eh. 
There we go. Gonna open the hatch. I mean, this is certainly a, a unique kind of uh, ooh, crystalline fragments. Let's see what these things have. Hmm. Gotta love that low gravity. I guess I could be here all day. Ooh, Celium. Always use a little some more psyllium. All right, enough of that. Doesn't look like there's anything like super unique about this. So let's see if I can get a good photo op here. Ideas. Oops. Uh, here, oh, that's not what I wanted. See here, I'm trying to frame this real good. It's hard to get the framing right in VR. All right. I guess I'll go ahead and shoot this thing too, since it's right here. Ooh, needle clusters. Are those new? Ah, uh, okay. My turrets having some issues. There we go. Huh. Hadn't seen this view in a while. All right. There you go, buddy.
Huh, tin. And a crystal. Interesting. Alright. Alright, well, let's head back to the ship. Collected a couple samples. Ship. Wow, that landing gear looks impressive. All right. Ow. Oh. Oh. Activate that. There we go. Okay, let's see. That was a fun little excursion. Now, let's see. Why you need to take that long to plot my course? Jack cone boost. Okay. Oops. All right. That was a fun little excursion. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take us to the furthest point that I feel comfortable, which is pretty much the next jump. Um, oops. I don't know why I already scanned this system. Force a habit, you know. Alright. Let's get that next. Okay, so <laughs> I misread my spreadsheet. Yeah, um, so this is actually the black hole system. I well, the uh, called uh, the Great Escape. That that system. Um, we're just under a thousand light years from it, and as you can see. Like, I'm trying to plot a route to it, and my ship's computer just can't find a route. Now, if I use FSD boosting... Uh, 
like I said, I could, I might be able to get there, but I don't know if I can get back. So we're just gonna get out of there. So we're actually, as far as I can get right now, Well, that's not entirely true. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to make it there. Wasn't there like a DC class star that I hadn't seen yet? I think it was this one. There we go, that's that weird one. So, Constellation Prize. We're gonna check out this DC White Dwarf Star. I should have, yeah, I got more than enough fuel to get there and back. And then I think I'm gonna end the stream. And who knows, this might be a, a system that no one's found before, so. That's a pretty looking star. Whoa. What the fuck? DC type star discovered. Fuck. DC white dwarf. Wow. Look at that, it's like, almost a, ah, oh, that's pretty wild looking. It's like in the process of becoming a neutron star, it looks like. I think that's the next part of the life cycle. I think I'm going to end the stream here. I want to thank all of you for watching. And, uh, here, let's back out a little bit here. All right. Take a couple shots here. Perfect. All right. Okay, so um, if you follow me on Twitter at RedFalcon2K6, you'll get updates on when the stream comes. Normally, I do these uh, every Wednesday starting at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, you can also, uh, all these streams are also uploaded to YouTube. Uh, 
just search for uh, Red Falcon, Elite Dangerous. You'll you'll find me pretty easily. There's also going to be a link to it at the end of this. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it. Um, again, I want to thank all of you for watching, and uh, all of you be safe out there.